So in this video, we're taking a clip from Sony A7R that is shot incorrectly. So the white balance is completely off. It is also highly compressed. If I punch in and show you, you can see these little blocks, like little chunks. This gets to tell you how compressed this footage is. So the odds are against us. We're taking this clip that is that has a look baked in, that is highly compressed and uh, has an incorrect white balance. And we're going to have to fix all of that and make it look good. OK, so first things first, usually what you've seen me do is just jump into my offsets and then I correct, you know, my white balance and then go from there. Well, that's not what's happening here, because if you look at my vector scope, we are balanced in the bottom, like in our blacks, and you can even see it right here in our blacks and somewhat mid tones, we're looking okay. It is our highlights that are completely off and we can even see it in our colorized waveform right here. You see all this blue uh, action that's happening up here. So we have to take all that blue out of our image, that tint, get our skin tones back, get all the colors put into their slots where they belong, and then make the image pop. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do, um, instead of using my offset, we're gonna start off with our gain, okay? So what do we have to do? We have to balance this out. So if I were to just jump in there and start doing this, like I'm literally looking at my parade, I'm not even looking at my image right now, and just park it somewhere around here, before and after. We made a huge difference. I mean, like I was literally just, my eyes were, locked in here. I was just balancing it out like up top. Now, the next step is I want to take my gain and I want to raise it up quite a bit. So I'm going to take it somewhere around here. And if I do before and after, we made a big difference, right? I mean, just look at all the blue and like, look at the skin tones. The next step is I'm going to go under my gamma. I'm going to pull it down right now. I'm just focusing on her face. I want to bring her skin to a point where it has some color and it looks good. So even something like that, this doesn't look bad at all. At this point, you have to improvise a little bit. Like, what do you want in your image? Like, how do you uh, want it to feel? Do you want it to feel cooler? And if that's the case, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and pull up my blues just a tiny bit, because let's not forget that we are um, in the snow, right? And then I'm going to take my red. What do I want to do? Do I want to bring up the red? I actually kind of like bringing up the red because I like what it does to her skin tones. So if I park this here, this is before and after. Just look at how good her skin looks, how good the snow looks in the back. Now we're getting somewhere. OK, so the next step is let's create a new node. The next step is going to be we got to pull out all this blue embedded blue in the image. OK, and the cleanest way to do that would be to use your hue versus saturation. And you see all the blue is stuck right here. So there's a couple of ways to do it. You can just click right here and create points right um, on the graph here. Or I can just hover over onto my screen and just click somewhere around here and it will create the points for me. And at this point, I can just go. Uh, I'm using my panel right now. I can just go in there and start pulling this down and just kind of eyeball it. Where do I want it? Right. I'm eyeballing it. So like, I don't want to overdo it, but I still want to really pull out those colors, right? So I'm just like looking at it and I'm going, to me, this is looking pretty believable. What happens if I grab this point and kind of stretch it out? Not too far, right? And what happens if I grab it here and stretch it out? Okay. So if I do this and look at it, you see like how much, how clean, our asphalt looks like our road looks so much cleaner than before, right? Like even right here. And it's also helping us create color contrast. This is before, this is after, right? Like we're getting all that dinge out of there, like all that color cast that was embedded into our Rec. 709 negative, if you will. Now what I'm going to do is create one more node. And what we want to do here is I think the highly saturated parts of the image are just too distracting. Like this red is just popping out unnaturally. It just makes it look very much like digital instead of like, let's just say a film like look that we want to create. 
So the cleanest way to remove that uh, effect would be un under your curves, HSL curves, sat versus sat. And all I want to do is just grab it from here, actually grab it from this side, my most saturated areas, and then I want to start pulling it down. So I'm going to go too far and then I'm going to bring it up. And then leave it somewhere around here. Why did I take out this much saturation? Uh, the, the concept is simple because we don't really have a lot of color in our image. Okay. So when I pull this saturation out and just keep my reds where they are, one, it makes it look like film. It just makes it look very clean. And two, the red still pops because there's not a lot of color in the image, right? So the red pops automatically. We don't have to overdo it. So this is where I would be parking it. And at this point, you can do a few things. You can go back here, take your gain and raise it up a little bit more and see if you want to go in that direction. I feel like I can get away with being somewhere around here. Yes, it's kind of pushed. Maybe bring it down just a little bit. Yes, it's kind of pushed, but I like what it does to my, to my image. Okay. So if I take all of this right now and kill it, this is where we started. This is where we ended up. And now if we were to break it down, this was our balance node. Then we took out the blue without overdoing it, right? Like, I mean, we can still go in there and try to like work it a little bit more. Maybe let's go a little bit further and see what happens. Like, so if I really go far like this or like something like that, I mean, I guess I can go um, a bit further than where I was before. Like even something like this, I don't mind it, right? Um but you have to decide, like, don't overdo it where it becomes a stylized look than like just cleaning up and color correcting your image because the look comes later. First, you have to correct your image. Then you go back and create a look. And then finally, we just brought the red down quite a bit, right? Um, I'm still pretty happy with where this red sits. Obviously, you can go back in there and decide, like, if you want to bring it up a little bit and kind of split the difference. Uh, I'm going to go back and then I'm going to start pulling it up and... kind of want to leave it just somewhere around here. I think it looks really good. And then finally, what we can do is go here, hit shift S, create a node prior, uh, drop on some grain. And then because we have a lot of artifacting, I want to kind of go heavy on the grain to like really cover up. Remember, like we have all of these like little blocks. So the grain is going to cover it up and you can see it, right? Like it's already covering it up. But then we can kind of go heavy on the grain. So like I'll take the strength and I'll bring it up a little bit. I'll take the size and I'll bring it up a little bit. And if I do before and after, you see how we're just kind of covering it up. Uh, mess around with the texture and just see what happens. And now let's pull back before and after, before and after. And uh, personally, I feel like it just gives it a lot of weight and makes it look pretty cool. Because I mean, even in this area, right? Like it just makes it look like film. It, it does help. So here's our hero frame, right? Once again, before where we started to where we ended up. I mean, this is a pretty huge difference, right? Like every color belongs. Like look at her skin tones. Look at her hair. Look at the snow. Look at our blacks, right? Look at our shadows. Everything is clean. And the best thing about what I just did and showed you here is that this is easily applicable to an entire scene. Um, where everything was shot with an incorrect white balance. You can just apply this and then go from there and make like micro adjustments if you have to. So hopefully this was helpful. If you do want to jump in and learn uh, some, some things like, you know, why did I use my grain here instead of like uh, being the last node or what is the proper node tree structure to get the right look? If you want to learn all of those things and much more, I have a free training that you guys should check out link is going to be up top and in the description below and on that note if you guys have any content suggestions drop them in the uh, comment section below and if you like this content then do me a favor smash the like button subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness and i will see you guys in the next video